buckle up for some serious quantum stuff. The company D-Wave, which is pursuing a unique approach to quantum computing, has reported a breakthrough. They say they've managed a computation that would have taken a conventional computer millions of years, which, if true, is the most impressive quantum computation we've seen so far. But is it a computation? Let's have a look. Imagine a bunch of tiny magnets all influencing each other. Physicists call this the Ising model. Riveting stuff, I know, but bear with me. While simple versions of the Ising model can be solved analytically, for difficult couplings between the magnets, their influence on each other can become very complex, including phase transitions in which the collective behavior suddenly changes. Simulating these transitions on a regular computer becomes a nightmare as the system gets larger. And yes, this is the same Ising model that was used by IBM for an attempt to demonstrate that even small noisy quantum computers outperform conventional computers. But as I just told you in a recent episode, another group then did the IBM calculation to better accuracy on a conventional computer. To understand what D-Wave has done, I first need to tell you how D-Wave's approach differs from other quantum computing approaches. D-Wave doesn't attempt to execute logical operations on single qubits. They instead use what's called quantum annealing. Sounds like a hippie retreat, but means you set up a large collection of qubits in a suitable configuration, then you let those qubits relax into an energetically ideal state, which they do on their own, and that ideal state gives you the answer you want to know. D-Wave has been working with thousands of qubits for years, whereas as IBM only just reached 1000 late last year. However, because the two approaches are so different, it makes no sense to just compare the numbers of qubits. Some physicists have argued that D-Wave's machines are not really quantum computers. I'll come back to this later, but first let's look at what they did. The D-Wave team used two of their devices to simulate these phase transitions of the coupled magnet system for a larger collection of magnets than any anyone has been able to calculate before. The tricky bit is verifying that it's right because, you know, no one's been able to do it before. So what they did is that they compared the result of their calculation, that's the blue squares, with the cases of small numbers of magnets where it can be calculated on a conventional computer, that's the line. As you can see, they agree very well. And for a large number of magnets, there are some mathematical approximations from which we know know that some quantities of the magnet system obey general scaling laws. Again, their simulation fits remarkably well to the expectation. You can see this in this figure on the right, where the data points are from their simulation and the rectangles are the theoretical predictions. They then estimate how long it would take to do this calculation on the best current supercomputers. As an example, they use the Frontier supercomputer located at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee. It's currently one of the most powerful computers in the world and performs more than a billion billion operations per second. The D-Wave group writes that even for a number of magnets smaller than what they did their calculation for, the hypothetical runtime on the Frontier supercomputer would surpass millions of years. It's actually really impressive. Honestly, I'm much more impressed by this than by the IBM results from last year, though I have to warn you that this is a preprint and has not yet been peer-reviewed. Now let me come back to the question whether this is a quantum computation. The word computation in general is somewhat vague. You could argue, for example, that any kind of material like this spoon, which I totally coincidentally have here, in some sense calculates the electron bounce of a metal. And it's really good at doing this. So in some sense, the spoon is a quantum computer, which would beat any supercomputing cluster. The reason we don't call spoons quantum computers is that they're one trick spoons. You can't ask them any other question except what a spoon does. Also, as everyone knows, spoons aren't real.
We really only speak of quantum computers if you can program the device. And this is where things get complicated. The D-Wave computers can be programmed to some extent, but they're not as universally programmable as the devices that IBM and Google are working on. This is why D-Wave, if you look at the title of the paper, now very carefully says that they're doing quantum simulations rather than calculations on a quantum computer. When they started their quantum simulations, D-Wave was heavily criticized for not making this difference clear. And while I understand why scientists raised this criticism, I always felt it was a little unfair. Because no matter what you call it, they're doing interesting things. Whether you want to call it a calculation or simulation doesn't really matter. I actually think that D-Wave is at this point probably in the best position to make a real impact in commercial applications, though these applications will be more limited than those of universal quantum computers, it's still better than a spoon. Yes, I've been talking about quantum physics again. It's without doubt one of the most exciting areas of science at the moment, though I may be a bit biased. If you want to learn more about how quantum physics works, you can check out my course on brilliant.org. It's a beginner's course that you can take without any background knowledge. It'll introduce you to topics such as interference, superpositions and entanglement, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And afterwards, you can continue learning more about your favorite topics in science, computer science or math. All courses on Brilliant come with interactive visualizations and follow up questions. It's really an easy and fun way to learn something new. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Links in the description below, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.